Let's go to um, Galatians chapter 2, all the way to 23. When you get there, just say amen, but somebody read it. Galatians chapter 2, 2, verses 22. Galatians chapter, I'm sorry, not chapter 6, chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians 5. And the word, there's so many back there in the back with the briefcase. Yeah. I believe it has a million dollars. They can't let nobody in oh, if they we don't can't, We can't let you in. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry if you got that on camera. No, I can cut it out. Okay, so so the 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 uh, the word for for Hebrew word for joy is simcha. So if you can repeat that with me, simcha. Simcha. And so simcha is the word joy. Verse twenty two says, "But the fruit of the spirit is love." We talked about that last week. Joy is our second one. Verse twenty three it says, "Against there is no law." Amen. 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 So we don't live by. They'll say that we don't live by the law and uh, we live by grace. And I say yes and amen to that, but the, but that's not basically true. So I would have to take that back. G Jesus came to fulfill the law and to do away with the curse of the law. And through Jesus, we fulfill the law. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you stay in Jesus, guess what? You fulfill the law. Fulfill Amen? The law. Amen. So now we talked about love and what love meant, which is a hava in Hebrew. Now it's simcha, and that is joy in Hebrew. Amen? Amen. Uh, the biblical definition of joy says that joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness. Amen? Amen. Uh, that is dependent on who Jesus is rather than on who we are. Or what is happening around us. Amen. amen. The narcissistic person. Yeah, he will take your joy from you. Amen. amen. He will rip it around. I mean he will take your joy from you. He'll, he'll shatter your salvation. Yes. And that's what the devil does. He comes to kill, steal and destroy. Amen. But Jesus says I come to give you life. And life more abundantly. Yes. And so right now just tell your neighbor. I come to speak life into you right now. I come to speak life into you right now. We speak life in this building. We speak life to everyone that is in this building. We declare, we decree Jesus. that this this building is a building of life, amen. Yes. And that yes. death has to leave this building because yes. if it's Jesus that is Lord of all, then yes. guess what? Then there's life and life more abundantly. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit abiding in God's presence and um, and from hope in His Word. Uh, I decided to put on some worship in the beginning so that this place could be saturated with worship. Yes. I believe that we should now move into a different atmosphere. Yes. That atmosphere of worship causing joy to be in it, love, uh, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the first verse we're going to have is Romans chapter 15, verse 13. This is the definition of joy. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Can somebody go ahead and take that, read that? Read what you gave Romans 15, verse no. what? Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. What does it say now? Now, now the God. Because then now the God. See, God is a now thing. Yes. When, when, when you read his word, now it now. happens now. Uh, the, like the definition of joy, you can you can declare that it's a now thing. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Everyone say shalom. Shalom. Uh, we'll be studying that next week in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound in joy. Amen. Yes. Read Amen. that one more time, Dr. Bell. Just now the God of hope. Fill you with all joy and peace. Amen. In believing, 
Amen. That ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The God, God now. When we when we when we talk about scripture, you can declare scripture now. Yes. It doesn't have to wait. God already sent his word. That's why you have it in front of you. Yes. Now that he sent his word, command it to do its thing. Yes. It has to do it. Believe it. Believe it and you receive it instantly. Amen. If you believe that with all your heart, mm -hmm. you'll receive it. Amen. Same thing with your question. Let me ask you a question. Are you saved? Yes. Amen. If you're saved, you believe it, right? Yes. And you can believe the word of God to give you hope. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 And we'll, amen. Let's, go, let's go to Romans 12, 12. Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Rejoicing means being joyful. Rejoicing. The definition that it just passed around, that is the definition of joy. And I, I give that to Mother Ruthie so she can have it so that if anybody here at the center wants to ask for it, they can, uh, they can call Mother Ruthie up and she can sit down and share with you what it means. Amen? Amen. Amen. So rejoice in hope. That means be joyful. Be joyful in your hope, in your, in your waiting. What hope means is in your waiting that God is going to do it. That means it doesn't mean that God is, I hope so, it might happen. No. Hope means God will do. Yes. Let me read that again. That's going to be on your test. Hope, hope means God will do. Amen? Okay. Say that with me. Hope means God will do. Hope means hope God, will, God do. will do. Why do I tell you to say that? Because if you can learn to say that to yourself, you can also tell yourself when the situation is happening in your family around you, God will do it. Yes. I'll share this with you because, you know, I'm going to share, I share it with Mother Ruth. They told my vehicle. I was behind on the payment. They told my vehicle. And the repo man is just asking me, you know, you want to pay pay a certain amount. And I'm like, no, keep keep your vehicle. I'll use that money for something else. I have a paid off van I can use. Wow. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna get me like that. Right. My my van is paid for in my garage. So I take take that vehicle with them six hundred dollars. I'll do something else for ministry. Amen. Right. Amen. I sold into somebody else's life. I'm not gonna play that game with you. Right. Amen. So I cleaned my hands off of a debt. And I said, here's what I said. I said, Lord, forgive me of my debts as I forgive my debt towards Father yes, God. Yes. Amen. Because what they tried to do was bind me into refinancing, to go into a higher payment, a longer payment. And that, listen to this, that $600, we could send that to Africa. Amen. We could send that to another ministry. We could, we could send that to, to, to Truth University. Amen. 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 We could use it for other things. We don't need to sit here and just constantly be spending $605 a month. Amen. And, and if they couldn't wait, after all that time that I've already paid, they Come couldn't on, wait man. just one month? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. No, two, if, I, if it took four months, you couldn't wait four months, five months? What's Amen. wrong with you? I mean, I'm not going to steal your car. Right. Yeah, so go ahead and take your car back. Here you go. Mm -hmm. And I was happy doing it, actually. And I was asked, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Yes. Why? Because my hope is in the Lord. Yes. Amen. When your hope's in the Lord, you can just smile at something and just say, hey, it's all right that that's happening right now. Yes. Because I know the next vehicle I have is going to be a paid-off vehicle. Yes. Amen. And I've already done, claimed it. I've already done, took a picture of it. Yes. I've already done, told the Lord about it. I even had somebody else pray with me about it. Yes. And now we believe and we're thankful for it. The Bible says, and in, in prayer, your supplication and thanksgiving. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so what we do is when we pray, we ask in Jesus' name. Since we have prayed, we've released that prayer into them. Now let's just give him thanks for doing it. So yes. I'm, I'm thankful God yes. is doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here it goes. James chapter, I mean, Philippians 4 verse 4. Philippians 4 verse 4 says one thing. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Here we go again. Philippians 4 verse 4. Somebody read it in a different version. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Why did he say that? He said, and again I say. Rejoice. Because he knew God's going to do it. <coughs> Philippians 4.4 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Mm -hmm. That means don't let nothing take your joy. Yes. At all. Yes. Man, if that man want to act like a fool, let him act like a fool. Right. 
You want you you want to act you want to act silly. You want to act dumb. Okay, well you you go be over there, and I'm gonna be over here with my salvation. Yes. I ain't gonna let you disturb my salvation. I'm gonna let you do that. Amen. And so I have learned, even at the hardest part of my life, I ain't gonna let them take my salvation, man. Yes. Amen. I ain't gonna lose no sleep. My my wife told me last night. She said, "You know, you slept like a baby." I said, you want to know why? Because my hope is in the Lord. Yes. Yes. And I will continue to be joyful all the days of my life. Yes. When I get up and I tell my daughters, when we're taking them to school, I said, say, this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice, rejoice in it. Be glad in it. My God, my God. Get up every day saying that to yourself. I will rejoice today. I will be joyful today. There is nothing that will take my salvation, the joy of my salvation. Let me share something with you. The joy of the Lord is the, is the gladness of the heart that comes from knowing God, abiding in Christ, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me say that one more time. The joy of the Lord is the gladness of the heart that comes from knowing God, abiding in Christ, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Those three things, knowing God. The second one is abiding in Christ. And the third thing, when you abide in Christ, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. That means you'll be filled with joy. You'll be filled with his, his fruit. And that is the most important thing. And if you're watching right now by, by YouTube, Facebook, or whatever it is, Instagram, I'll tell you what. The best thing you can do is know God by abiding in Christ. And if you abide in Christ, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, nothing will shake you. Nothing Amen. will shake you. Amen. Amen. Let's go to James chapter 1. Verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptation. Mm -hmm. Count it a what? All joy. Is there a comma after that? No. When you fall into diverse temptation, semicolon. Okay, semicolon. <laughs> Amen. Is there some more with that? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yes. So if you count it a joy in all trials, your patience. Mm -hmm. It's really what your patience is doing with trials. Your patience is actually being tried. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your salvation is being pushed to its limits. Mm -hmm. Faith is being produced and all of that. Endurance is being produced. And that. So don't get upset. Don't get mad. Don't get all messed up. Get your hair all out in, the, in different places. Just let the Lord do it, and I tell you what, just count it a joy. Yes, yes. Because guess what? We could be in some other part of the world. It'd be much more harder than this. Yes, yeah. Yes, so yes. Galatians five twenty two talks about the fruit of the spirit again. You know, but it's funny that love will produce joy. Joy will produce patience. Kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. When you allow these 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 fruits of the spirit to ma to manifest and 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 um, and build other parts of the fruit of the spirit in your body, mm -hmm. like a Lego, you know, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden shalom is all over you. Peace right. is all mm -hmm. over you. Next week we'll be talking about the peace, but we're not going to talk about the peace like we know. We're going to talk about the peace that's shalom. And what it means to have shalom in your life. John 16, verse 24. Let's read it. John 16, verse 24. John 16, verse 24. Hitherto. Ye have asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Okay. Now there's a key in there. What's the key, Dr. Bell? You gotta ask. In what? In his name. Let's read that again then. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Mm -hmm. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. A key to prayer when you're asking for something, asking what? In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. And ask, 
believe in it. And believe in it. Because <laughs> yeah, when you're asking, you better believe, okay? Right. So it says, it's here, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Yeah. Why would he say that? Because he's the key to God's heart. Right. Amen. He's the key to unlocking to what the Father in heaven will give to you. Mm -hmm. And if you ask in that name that is above every name, it says you'll receive it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, that, and then here it is, so that your what can be filled. So that your joy, joy will be filled. Be full. yes. The Bible calls it the joy of salvation. The oil of gladness. Amen. So that your joy can be filled. So let us ask in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. yes. I asked him today for, for $10,000. I said, Lord, I need $10,000. Because I already got the picture of the Hummer that I want. I want an H2. I've always wanted one my whole life. Plus, it's big enough to fit my whole family and the ones that are going to come over here to visit. I asked the Lord. I got a picture of it. Everything was $15,000 or more. I said, God, you got that right one at the right place because I'm not going to overpay for something that's a 2005, 2006 model. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay $20,000. I just going to get a new vehicle for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Instantly, a picture came up, and the H2 was $9,600. Mm -hmm. So I said, Father God, I said, this is the one I want. I sent the picture to my pastor, and my pastor tells me, and he's my friend, he says, let's pray. Let's pray right now. And we asked, we believe, and now we're thankful because we have received the money to do it. Let's, let's just be thankful. That's the way it is. Amen. That way your joy will be filled. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't have it because we didn't, we didn't ask in that name that it was above every name, and that's right. Jesus. Right. And he says, ask in my name. Because why? He, here's, the, here's, the, here's the question to the test. Who is Jesus to God, the Father? He is the key to the Father's heart. You ask in that name. Who is Jesus to the Father? Who is Jesus to the Father? And He is the key to His heart. He Don't is. Don't forget to pray for the gas for that. That's like eight miles. Of, that's worse than my car. The greatest thing is. <laughs> the greatest thing is is now there's there's a thing called an, uh, an H2 kit that runs on hydrogen. Right. And you install that joker in there. And hallelujah! You can get like 40, 40 miles to the gallon almost. Yeah, I don't know about throwing that. Yeah, and you could throw it on that Cadillac too. I know that for sure. It's a guy who invented it, so yeah. I think it costs like maybe one hundred and seventy-five dollars to get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's called a hydrogen kit. So praise the Lord. And if you're looking at me, I did not tell you to get that for your vehicle. Praise <laughs> the Lord. That's true. No one, no one coming after me. Amen. So that, that your joy may be full. John sixteen twenty-four. Let's go to let's go to Psalm sixteen eleven. Psalm sixteen eleven. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. So you make known to me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And that's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and these things shall be added unto thee. If we were, if we would just seek in my God, if we would seek his righteousness, but it says this, you may make known to me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy at your right hand are the pleasures forevermore. You know, when Jesus was born, the angels announced good tidings of great joy. Yes. Can you believe that? Yes. Now I got a problem when there's some folk, they just angry when they preach it. <laughs> they angry at everything. That's right. And let me tell you something about that, you know, and, and I'll share this again, because the more you think about the devil, mm -hmm. the more he becomes active in your life. Mm -hmm. The more you think about Jesus, mm -hmm. the more joy will be added to your life. Amen? Amen. You got that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people get entangled with more of other things than what they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. They want to know about the second and the third heavens, but then yet they don't want to know about Jesus. My thing is to get you to know about Jesus so that you'll be full of Jesus so that he, so that you'll get the key, which is Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So that you're, in, you're able to enter into that third heaven mm -hmm. and visit with the Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our, Jesus, Jesus was here. He paid the price so that we could be nearer to the Father. Mm -hmm. Anything that draws you away from the Father is not the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and I had a lot of backlash because of this belief. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they, they, they made fun of me 
because I decided to close the four corners of the belief of what the church is supposed to be and just be in a studio right now. Mm -hmm. But here's what I believe in, being debt free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe in being debt free. I will not, I don't want to pay bills. Right. Mm -hmm. Only thing I should be paying is electric. Amen. Right. Amen. Air conditioning, water, yeah. internet. Track. Internet. That's it. <laughs> I don't want to pay for nothing else. Right. And and so and so my belief is what the Lord told me. He told me work, build a studio and teach. So as I'm teaching, I'm working. Mm -hmm. Now the only thing I have to focus on is building a studio and that one is debt free. My van is paid off. Mm -hmm. My home is paid off. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to go outside of that. Mm -hmm. Anything that takes my focus away from the Lord, it's not God. And I test, I test, I test, I put that on the test. The Bible says test every spirit. Bible says. So if it's pulling me away from the joy of the Lord, it's not the Lord. And so sometimes we have to, yes, I understand sometimes we have to get us a vehicle, we have to give us a house, or we have to pay payments. I understand that. You understand that? Because that's just the game of life. But I want you to focus, though, who is your joy? If you start focusing on who your joy is, you'll see what needs to come to you come to you like that. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a promise from God. His word says it. And if his word says it, it says he sent his word. And if he sends his word, his word doesn't fall to the ground. That's it right. does what it says it's going to do, and that's what we should be thankful for. Amen. Amen. Just tell your neighbor, don't let anything take you from the joy of the Lord. Don't let anything take you from the joy of the Lord. The angels announced good tidings and great joy. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, let's see that in Luke chapter 2, verse 10. And all who find Jesus know with the shepherds of, of the nativity the joy that brings, the joy that Jesus brings. Even before his birth, Jesus had bought I have brought joy as attested in Mary's song. So let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 10. And the, and the angel said unto them, to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, mm -hmm. which shall be to all people. Amen. Amen. So, so when we introduce Jesus to somebody, is it going to be because they're going to hell? No. no. It's because there's joy and salvation. Amen. 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 Yeah, there, there, there is the truth is you could wind up in hell. You, that is very true. But my thing is to let you know that there's joy in Jesus. Amen. 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 Everything that you need is in him. That's right. And everything that you want is in him. And if you're looking for a man, believe me, you might want to first look for Jesus first. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That characteristic of that man will be shown because you know Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm telling you, man. Those three things, knowing God, abiding in Christ, and being filled with the Holy Spirit will allow you to understand his joy. Amen? Amen. So we see there that uh, we can understand that, that, that there is there was joy, good tidings and joy. Now look, Luke 1, 47, if we go back to chapter 1, verse 47, we understand that even before his birth, Jesus, Jesus had brought joy as attested in Mary's song. What's Luke 1, 47 say? And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Mm -hmm. He rejoiced. So he brought joy even before he was born. Amen? Amen. Now I'll go to Luke 1 44. What does it say there? For lo, as soon as the voice of the thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. For joy. He was, even before he was born, he brought what? Joy. joy. Don't you just hate it when <laughs> when, the, when you hear when you know somebody's coming, you're like, oh Lord, here comes this person. Oh yeah, I do that all the time. God, all this. Oh, Lord. Lord, he's coming this way. Please, Lord, don't let him stop and talk to me. Oh, God. <laughs> and you're sitting there speaking in tongues, Shamdai, Honda, you know. And and, 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 you, and you and you just don't want this person around because why? They suck your joy right out of you. I guess I'm, have you had just somebody suck the joy right out of you? Yeah. All they going. talk about is something negative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, I can't stand people like that. Matter of fact, the Bible says it's better for for a man. It's better for a man to sleep on a roof yeah. than a woman that is dripping. Like Naked wife. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you know what? That's what God. How God sees us when we constantly complain to Him. Mm -hmm. We see Him as 
he sees us as a drip, a drip, like that sink, just dripping water out of the mm -hmm. sink. Whoop, 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 whoop. And so what God is like, he can't be around stuff like that. Right. Because God is so positive that even before Jesus was born, he was bringing joy to the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. So we, we need to learn what took our the joy of our salvation. Go back and get it back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> get your joy back. Praise the Lord. Let's go to let's go to Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verse 22. And we're going to see how joy brings, how joy is a good medicine. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit drives the most. My God. What breaks your spirit? Mm -hmm. Ask your neighbor, what breaks your spirit? What breaks your spirit? What breaks your spirit? Mm -hmm. And they say, whatever breaks your spirit, get your joy back. Amen. Amen. Get your joy back. How do you get that back? Focus back on Jesus. Get your focus back on Jesus, Amen. and your joy will come back to you. Amen. I know that there's tough times, but put your put put your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Jesus exemplified Amen. joy in his ministry. Amen. Amen. He was no gloom, acidic. Rather, his enemies accused him of being too joyful on the occasion. Let's go to let's go to Luke chapter seven, verse thirty-four. We're gonna see what happened to Jesus, man. His his own enemies. Got mad at him. His own enemies got mad at him for being joyful. Amen. Mm -hmm. Luke 7, verse 34. Seven verse 34. And if ye lend. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man, that's not it, that's yeah, not it. a gluttonous man, and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Ah, so Jesus, a friend of public here, uh, of Republicans and sinners. I <laughs> didn't say Republicans, of uh, uh, politicians, publicans, and sinners. I now here's Jesus. hang out with them than church folks. Now he, he, here's, here's the deal. <laughs> Watch what Jesus answered. He said, but wisdom is justified of all her children. Mm -hmm. And what was funny, because in Proverbs just recently, we said that joy, a joyful heart is a good medicine. Amen. That's yes. right. We also saw that Jesus brought joy before he was even born. Mm -hmm. And here comes them, them religious folks. Yeah. Why are you so happy, man? Yeah. I like it the way they ask me. You doing okay? Like, you know, some spiritual is supposed to happen. <laughs> You're like, we're supposed to just wind up being zapped. I really was there. I've even been asked when I've gone to preach in places, how's your spiritual life, son? I was like, well, man, you just messed it all up right now. <laughs> I, I had the joy of the Lord when I walked in. All of a sudden, you just got so serious on me. What, what happened? What happened to your spiritual life? And I revert that back to them. Because my spiritual life is okay. It's good. It's, it's yeah. great, actually. Amen? Amen? Because I'm focused on Jesus, and I have the joy of the Lord. Yes. The joy of my salvation. Nobody will take that from me, not the devil himself. He knows not to walk this way with that, that craziness. Because mm. I'm not about that. Mm. I'm, I'm too busy focused on him, and I advise us that we continue to stay focused on him. Luke 7, 34. Let's read that one more time. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Go to verse 35, Tam. But wisdom is justified of, her, of all her children. So in joy, there's wisdom. Mm -hmm. In joy, there's wisdom. Uh, praise the Lord. Let's let's talk about this. Jesus described himself as the bridegroom enjoying a wedding feast in chapter in Mark chapter 2, 18 through 20. In Mark chapter 2, verse 18 through 20, and we're almost through. Mark chapter 2, 18 through 20. He described himself and, as the bridegroom. And, Go ahead. And the disciples of John. Mm -hmm. And of the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do the 
who the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but the disciples fast not. Jesus and Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is here is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go to twenty. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Amen. And it's God's giving us, uh, Jesus is giving us a description of, he's a, he's telling, he says, well, the bridegroom is with them. How are they going to fast? Amen. Now that we have the Holy Spirit to the comforting counselor, now we're able to fast mm -hmm. for the bridegroom to come. Mm -hmm. right. And if our focus is on the things of the Lord, then the joy of salvation will always be there. Amen. Let me say that again. We have the Holy Spirit as comforter and counselor. Mm -hmm. And now we can fast, but we fast for the bridegroom to come. Mm -hmm. And if we're focused on Jesus, the bridegroom, yes. we'll always have the joy of salvation in us. Amen. 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 You want one more scripture? You know, Mother Ruth. Yes, she agreed. Amen. <laughs> Let's go to John 16, verse 22. I think after the fruit of the Spirit, we should do fasting. Amen. And ye now, therefore, have sorrow, mm -hmm. but I will see you again. Mm -hmm. And your heart shall rejoice, Amen. and your joy no man take it from you. Amen. And no man will take your joy from you. Amen. This is our biggest fight right now. Yes. Out of any of the fruit of the Spirit, the biggest one that you're going you're gonna to struggle with is somebody to, trying to take your joy from you. Mm -hmm. But if you rely on the comfort and the counsel of the Holy Spirit, no man will take your joy from you because yes. Jesus will be present at all times with you. He might not be here in a bodily form, but he gave us his Holy Spirit. That's right. And let me tell you, those three people are one. Amen. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Uh, Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the joy, the joy of salvation, but the joy of your Holy Spirit, God. Yes, Father God, we ask you if we've taken our focus off of you, Lord, and our joy has been taken from us. Yes. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, by the authority and the power of your Holy Spirit, God, yes. we take back our joy. We take back our peace. We, pay, we take back the love, Father God. Yes. But Lord, we declare the joy of salvation, Lord, to be yes. in this place, Father God. Amen. Lord, we ask, Lord, we are the temple of your Holy Spirit. Lord, restore unto us the joy of salvation and the oil of gladness. God, direct our path, Father God. Keep our eyes focused. Keep our face of flint yes. upon you, Father God, so that we may not sin against you, but that we will keep our joy, Lord and that it may be to the fullest, Lord. God, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, and we thank you for all that you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, for doors of opportunity open. We thank you for doors of advancement, God. We thank you for, Lord, the financial freedom that we need, Father God. We thank you for it right now, Lord. We thank you in advance for financial freedom, Father God. And Lord, I declare and decree over everyone, Lord, that they will have financial freedom, God. I declare it over Dr. Bell right now, God. Yes, yes, I speak yes. to the four corners of her finances, God. Yes, and Lord, yes. I declare and decree that we will be a debtor to no man, Father God. Yes, Lord, I declare, declare and decree that, Father God, the joy of salvation be restored to her finances, God. Yes, yes. God, because I can ask in that name that is above yes. every name, Jesus, yes. God. And I can believe that you will do it, Lord, for her and for everyone that is here, Father God. I can, I can believe that, God, that you will restore the joy of your salvation, Father God, to our finances, too, Lord. And, God, I thank you right now. I thank you for a good report, God. I thank you for everything that is going to happen within this week, Lord, yes, yes. even today, Father God. Yes. I thank you for restoration of family. Thank I thank you for restoration, Lord, of all that we could even think of or even think above, Father God. Lord, Lord, for your ways are not our ways, God. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. So, Lord, I thank you for your ways and your thank thoughts, you. Father God. Yes, thank you, Abba, Father, for all that you're going to do, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we give you the honor, the glory, and praise. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. And just tell the person next to you, the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. amen.